DIY auto tech. Typically when a headlight bulb or another bulb is out, we just assume that the bulb is bad. However, I'm going to walk you through a couple very simple steps that you can do at home to assess as to whether the bulb itself is bad, whether you have an electrical component failure, wiring harness failure, fuse, relay, or component problem. Let's get into it. First thing is to check the customer complaint. We can see one headlight is on, one headlight is off. Now you want to double check and make sure that when you turn the high beams on that you don't have the same thing happening because those run off of two separate circuits. So let's go ahead and test that out. Turn our high beams on. Okay, we can see that both work now. Okay, so here is why that happens. We have a standard dual filament bulb. And what you'll notice is that there's two sets of coils. You have one set that's lower here, one set of lower coils, one set that's higher. So when your low beams are on, you've got your 12 volt circuit that goes through one set of coils and that illuminates, creating light. Now when this bulb goes bad, this coil itself typically disintegrates and blows. And so power cannot flow through that anymore and that's why the bulb is dead. Now that is why we check the high beams because now we can assess the other filament and if we're able to get power into the other filament, this means that we have continuity and ground going to this bulb itself. But we're gonna assume for the sake of this video that both the high beam and the low beam didn't work so that we can test some other components. But I just wanted to show you that, that you've got both a low beam and a high beam filament here. And so one of them can go bad and the other one can still work. First thing I always do here is a visual inspection of the area and key. So I'm checking, I've got both. I've got, uh, this is gonna be a three wire circuit. I've got uh, power, daytime running, and a ground. And so I can see all the wires are intact. Everything looks connected. The connector is firmly pressed into place and the boot is sealed. So there's probably not gonna be any corrosion that we see here. Next, we can come to a fuse panel, like you'll see here in most engine bays. Typically, you'll have one here, you'll have one body control one in the car, or some might have multiple. And we can come over here and we can look at both our headlight relay here. And we're gonna have a couple fuses as well that run for this, and we'll probably be using the low, low beams here. So the headlight low for left and right side. So we're gonna check both of these fuses, and we wanna check this headlight relay as well. All right guys, so there's gonna be three ways to test this once we get the cover off. We will pull the fuse in in the location here and just do a visual check for to make sure that it's not blown. We're gonna do that. We can also use a voltmeter, which we'll do. And we can also use something like a Noid light or a circuit tester like this as well. So we'll actually do all three here and we're gonna test the fuses on the left and right side. You have to do this test while the headlight switch is flipped on. All right, first things first, we're gonna look at our fuse block here. And I want not the first, not the second. I want the third and fourth 10 amp fuses here. So we're gonna check those. One, two, let's see, one, two. So the third and fourth ones are gonna be here and here. So I'll check those with my voltmeter here. Might be able to see that in the picture. So one, two, three, fourth one. One, two, three. So I can see I got 12 volts on one side, 12 volts on the other, 12 volts on one side, 12 volts on the other. So I know that these two fuses are good. Now I can do the same thing with my circuit tester here. Okay, so I'm testing my light here to make sure. So I'll go again, one, two, three, and four. So I'm gonna test here. Okay, I've got my ground side. I've got power and power power and power. I can see it here by this little uh, red light here that's lighting up. I've got 12 volts power, 12 volts power, 12 volts power, and 12 volts power. So I've got power going from both sides of the fuse. So we'll disconnect that. And now we're gonna also do a visual inspection. We're gonna pull them out and check them. Okay, I use the little fuse puller, one, two, the third and fourth one, like I said. So we'll look at the third one here. Both of those look good good prongs on each side. Push that back in. And now let's take this other one, the left hand one. We'll bring it to the bench and take a look. All right guys, you can see we have a 10 amp fuse here. This is from our left hand headlight circuit. You can see this little piece of metal here, this thin piece of metal. So this is current protected. So if this circuit goes over 10 amps, 
this piece of metal can't handle that and will pop. And you'll see that part of this will look burned and it won't be a continuous piece of metal here. So you'll actually see this burned up and you'll realize, oh, this is a bad fuse. Now we already knew this was a, a good fuse because we did a continuity check, right? We saw 12 volts on this end and 12 volts on this end, which means both ends were connected because we sent power through one side, checked it, and we sent power through the other side and checked it. So we had power on both sides of the prongs, which means that this was a continuous flow of current. Had that not been the case, I would have maybe seen power on one side and no power on the other side. We know this is a good fuse because we continuity checked it with our voltage light, uh, arnoid light, whatever you want to call it, and our digital multimeter. And then now again with this visual check, now we have three forms of checking this, so we know this is a good fuse. Let's go check the relay. Okay guys, now we're gonna do the same thing with the relay. Uh, when you're testing for relay operation, all you're gonna be doing is swapping the relay in question for a known good relay. So I can pull, if this is a four pin relay, say this is the relay for the headlight circuit, I would pull this relay, I would pull this relay next to it if it's the same four pin style, and I'm gonna pop it on here. I'm gonna test my circuit with a known good relay. And so by swapping relays, you can see if the problem uh, persists or if the problem is fixed. If the problem's fixed, we know that we have a bad relay. I have a video that I'm gonna link up in the cards here that shows you how to test relays specifically if you want to do that on the bench it's an easy thing to do we're not going to do that in this video so in this case you would swap relays in this vehicle uh, this relay is very specific and i don't actually have another relay to swap it with nothing in this box is similar and so what i can do is just a quick power check since this is a four pin relay we're gonna have power at 30 and 87 or whatever it is and so i can take my voltmeter go to a known good ground and I can see that I'm getting 12 volts and I need power on two sides here. So I can see I've got power here, 12 volts and 12 volts. So basically in this four pin relay, so I have four pins, right? Two of them are gonna have power. When this one is, gr when this circuit is grounded, it's gonna cause the coil here to close the secondary set and then power is gonna flow through that into the headlights. So I need two 12 volt power sources here. Now, if this was in question, we'd also wanna test our ground circuit and we've got videos on that as well. And also note that we can use our circuit test here the same way we did with our fuses. We would pop that on both of those terminals and we would see the light glow because there's power there. Assuming that our relays, our fuses are good, we're gonna come downstream to the actual connector here. And in this, uh, sen sensor circuit or in this headlight circuit we have three wires typically it's a daytime running light power and ground or you're going to have a two wire set with just power and ground if you have no running lights and we're going to check these wires here all right so i want you guys to watch the bulb here so i'll go to my middle port here and we'll see red for power there so i know i have 12 volt feed there i don't have power here but i've got a green bulb here which means i'm on a ground circuit or a good continuity I should say. And here I'm also green and that shows that I have continuity into a ground circuit. So green here does not mean that I am grounded. Green means that I have continuity to a ground circuit. So it, I can't pick it up very well on the test light because of the light out here. But if I look with the running lights on, what I'll see is a change here. Well, I'll have a lower voltage coming in on my secondary wire here, which is on the side, okay? Now, I, before I had my 12 volts coming in here. Now I've got a lower voltage signal coming on this side for the daytime running lights. So I know that I'm getting power to this circuit here and I've got good ground over here. Okay. So now I know that everything coming up to the um, connector here is good. I've got good power. I've got good ground. I've got good voltage from the battery, obviously a good fuse and good relay. So now the only other culprit that we need to check out is that actual bulb. All right, now it's left is get the pesky old bulb out. Now, if you're just checking the bulb and you don't actually know if it's out, if you're coming to this step first, you'll want to wear gloves. You don't want to get the oils from your hands on the actual uh, glass. So I'm just pulling the rubber boot off here real gently. And I'm taking a look at how the clasp is set up here. And I'm going to pull this out. And let's take it to the bench and look at it. Okay guys, I got passenger and driver side lights out. And 
you know, what's interesting is upon initial inspection, uh, I don't see the coil blown out on this. I don't see any areas where the light's actually blown itself. So in cases like this, again, I'm not using my oily fingers to touch the glass or any of the filaments. We're going to do an ohm check on this. So you will need a voltmeter for this. We want to set to read ohms, and it's actually helpful for the videos to use sound. So if there's continuity, continuity between these two points, you're going to hear a sound. So let's check a known good bulb here. So we have continuity between those two points. Okay, we'll check our bad bulb here. And we have continuity between these two points. So I know that this is our high beam circuit because it works on both the good bulb and the bad bulb in question. Now let's check another part of this, which is going to be our low beam, which is our top pin and this one on the left. And again, we have continuity. Now we'll do that on the bad bulb here, we'll do our top pin and this one on the side. And you can see that nothing is happening. You're not hearing a sound because there's not continuity between these two points, right? So this is our low beam circuit here. So power is not able to go through, go through the coil, create light, and come out and ground right here. So we know that this bulb is bad, meaning something in here is bad. Now, can I visually spot that? Nope, I can't. But I know that our low beam bulb is up here. And so likely it's gonna be the, there's a piece that wraps up over the back that's probably burned out. Typically you're gonna see the coil itself burned out in here but um, it's a little harder to see in this one. So we know this bulb is bad. That's why I just touched the glass. It's okay for me to touch this as a bad bulb. So we're gonna go ahead and replace the bulbs on both sides, right? Because if you're replacing one, that means this one's probably not too far out from going out. So you wanna replace them with two good known bulbs. My recommendation is always these Sylvania Ultras. I love these. They work really well. It's about 45 bucks for a set but uh, headlights are important. You wanna buy the brightest thing possible. I'm gonna link these in the description below uh, because I've been using these for years and they're about as bright as you can get uh, on the store-bought shelf. All right, got the new headlights installed. As you can see, one and two, both working. We'll check the high beams, make sure that those work as well and the daytime running line so we get it started. Now, before you go and wrap this job up, also note that anytime you change headlights, headlight bulbs you do need to readjust them so that they're not aimed too low too high too far left or right so you're gonna have to find a good flat surface you're gonna want to go do this at night and your user manual should specify uh, exactly how high or low those should be you can see some headlight adjustment points here and here specifically on my car to just the headlight up down side to side and aiming directions they're pretty convoluted here it's almost horizontal aimed down a little bit from center line here you can see headlights somewhat aiming inward and if you guys are interested in any of the tools or similar products that I use here in this video take a look in the description below for those Amazon associate links the whole goal of this video was to teach you guys how not to be parts changers and how to diagnose things so you know how they work this is not an all-inclusive video. I made this to be fast and efficient and something for the DIYer who's not a licensed mechanic to do at home. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stick around for the next one. This is Anthony at DIY Auto Tech. Like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.